tuning to today's video and today we're gonna be looking at the top five basketball programs outside of the Blue Buds. Now, the reason why I chose outside of the Blue Buds is because it would be totally unfair if I made a top five video about you know basketball programs since the year 2000 because four out of the five would probably all be Blue Buds. And if you are confused of who the Blue Buds are, you live on the rock. The Blue Bulls are the North Carolina Tar Heels, the Duke Blue Devils, the Kansas Jayhawks, and of course the bum ass Kentucky Wildcats. And I decided to include the UCLA Bruins just because growing up I always thought they were a Blue Bud, and apparently they're not. But first, we're going to start off with an honorable mention, the first one being the Syracuse Orange. Now, I actually wanted to include them in my top five, but... I didn't. I was kind of persuaded not to, which for good reason. They do, you know, I've only had one national championship since the year 2000. And of course, everybody knows that was the Carmelo Anthony era. And since then, Syracuse has been relatively quiet. They've only been to two Final Fours, both being 2013 and 2016. But the way I look at the Syracuse basketball program is they're not really known for big regular seasons. They do make a lot of noise in the tournament. It doesn't matter what seed they are. I feel like Syracuse is one of those teams you can always count on to make you to the 616 or even the Elite Eight. If you ever look at my bracket, I always have them beating everybody, which of course they have wins over the number one seeded Virginia Cavaliers a few years back. Even the Michigan State Spartans, who are also on this list, not as an honorable mention, of course. But Syracuse is just one of those teams I like to call a giant killer. Like, they will always be there when you don't want them to be there if you're not a Syracuse fan. Now, me being a part time Syracuse fan, it helps a little bit, and then it doesn't. But the Virginia Cavaliers, yes, I have them as an honorable mention. Now, to the casual NCAA fans, you might think I'm crazy. But allow me to explain to you why I'm not effing insane, all right? When you have a loss to UNBC on your resume, that it kind of, your program kind of loses a star. Like, it loses a little bit of credibility. Had this happened in the regular season, nobody would probably care. But it didn't. It happened on the biggest stage where you're pretty much the number one favorite in every category to win the national championship. So, yeah, that does not help your case whatsoever. Now, Virginia, to me, is one of those teams that they're what I like to call the Atlanta Falcons of college basketball. And the reason why I say that is because, yes, they dominate the regular season, but that's honestly all they do is dominate the regular season. Go look at the stats. Virginia, since the year 2000, has only made it past the Elite Eight once. They've only been to the Elite Eight twice, and they've only been to the Sweet 16 three times. That is bad when you're a team like Virginia. That is bad. Most of their exits come in the round of 32 or the Sweet 16. And with a resume like Virginia, I'm sorry, correct me if I'm wrong, but you do not you do not get to be a top team in this millennial with that type of resume. Unless you're a blue blood, you don't get away with stuff like that. But before I start ranting, let's just get right to the list. What a performance. The Gators as good as it gets. Florida's the national champion. The Florida Gators rank number five. Now Kind of for the same reason I have Virginia on this list. It'll be disrespectful not to put Florida's program on this list. Keep in mind, they're the only school in this millennial to have back-to-back -back national championships. Keep in mind, that was the third national championship appearance. A lot of people forget they lost the championship to Michigan State in the year 2000. Don't get me wrong, not really a big fan of Florida, but I will, you know, I, I do recognize the game. And, Although 2014 was kind of the last year where they've been quote unquote relevant, as some of like you know my friends say, but they still and that I think they probably can for a while at least until somebody does it again, live off that back-to-back -back national championships only because it hasn't been done since and in the dominant dominating fashion that they did it. So that's kind of why they're on this list. You know, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy. Watching them beat Kentucky every other year, but it needs to happen more often. And you can leave it to Cleve. And he's running out of the floor. 
Michigan freaking State. I will try my best not to be biased. Now I don't I don't hate Michigan State. But Michigan State is one of those teams that they act like they're blue bloods. Like they, they they're just one of those teams that you know they, they 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 put on the mask for the blue bloods. They act like they're blue bloods, but they're in my opinion nowhere freaking near. Now don't get me wrong, National Championship 2000. Hey, do your thing. Guess what? It's almost 20 years ago, and you really haven't. I wouldn't say you haven't done much since, because they do lead everybody on this list with seven Final Fours, and if I'm not mistaken, they lead all programs since the year 2000 with seven Final Fours. Now, here's here's my issue with that. You've been to seven Final Fours, right? You've only been to two national championships. That means you lost five times out of seven. That's bad. Well, really six, because they were the national championship one up in 2009. I know, because that was your Louisville was supposed to win. But I know Final Fours are a big deal, you know. But I feel like all the teams on this list, you don't go to the Final Four just to say you went to the Final Four. You go to say, I won an effing national championship. And when you've been to seven of them, and you've only came out with one national championship, that's a problem. That's just me, though. Keep in mind, this is seven since the year 2000. Now, big respect to them. I just want to know who the fuck do you think you are. Kemba Walker, step back, Walker, cardiac Kemba, does it again, UConn wins at the buzzer. The UConn Huskies, now, I can't wait to school you casual, you know, you casual college basketball fans, because a lot of you are probably like, oh my god, UConn, UConn, you know, they, they've missed so many tournaments, like, here's the thing, yeah, you are absolutely right. Here's what you probably forget. UConn has three effing national championships since the year 2000. The 04 one, I feel like, goes under the radar just because we kind of live in a generation where we kind of forget about that. Unless you're a UConn fan, obviously. But three freaking national championships, multiple conference championships. Who can forget about, you know, Kimba Walker's 11-game run that led them to that national championship in 2011, I believe? So, and don't forget, Kimba gave us one of the greatest stepbacks in basketball, probably history. So, for you casuals, yes, UConn is a great freaking program. Three national championships, that's way more than anybody on this list. The only reason why they're not high on this list is because, yes, consistency I said that totally wrong. It's bad. Yes, I would be the first one to say that. Yes, but here's a stat that you probably didn't know. UConn is undefeated in all Final Fours. They're undefeated, and they have five national championships. So yes, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to speak for all UConn fans. Put some respect on their name. Thank you, and have a very blessed day. Next on the list. Won't need to make these free throws. Doesn't have to worry about them. There is no pressure. All he can do is add to what the lead is right now, and it's not going to happen. And the Louisville Cardinals are the 75th NCAA college basketball champions. And Rick Louisville, it's a tricky school in my opinion. You kind of have to, you kind of have to know to know. You know, like in my opinion, right, Louisville. Dominant school, very dominant school, consistently good. One of the rare schools on this list that's consistently in the talks for a Final Four every single year. And here's the reason why I have them ranked so high is because although since 2018, Louisville's was kind of fallen off the radar, you can't really not talk about the dominance Louisville has had in their respective conferences since 2000. To 2018. Yes, I know me stopping at 2018 is completely unfair because you have to, I have to include all seasons, which I did. I included all the seasons. So that's why they ranked two and not number one like I wanted them to be. Now, here's the thing we can say those titles, those final fours were vacated, but it happened, baby. It happened. So Louisville is the guy at rare school on the list who I feel like is consistently good no matter what. You'll never, here's, that's one thing I will say about Louisville. You'll never catch us not competing. You'll never see 
a broadcaster and analyst not bring us up in all the debates because we should be in every single debate and we know we are going to be in every single debate and i will go to my grave saying louisville deserves if they ever <laughs> decided to like expand the blue bus for some effing reason and louisville should be first on that list but as i said the last four years in louisville basketball have not been kind to louisville yes we've had our season when we were ranked number one but obviously the pandemic happened so we killed all that momentum but in time, we'll figure it out. I feel like we deserve it more than freaking Michigan State. To all you Michigan State fans out there. But that could just be me being biased. But on to the number one school outside the Blue Buds. Trying to go length of the court with Archie Diakono. Three seconds at midcourt. Jenkins gives it to Jenkins for the championship. The Villanova Wildcats. I never thought I'd see myself cheering for a school with Wildcats in their name. But here's why they're number one. In my opinion, they have two of the best national championships on this list, probably in this millennial. Because obviously, like who can forget the buzzer beater? You handed a, you know, a great blue blood school, probably its worst defeat in history next to you know UNBC and all that stuff but you handed them probably one of the worst defeats in history then on top of that not even well about a year and a half later you come in and you completely obliterate a great defense Michigan team which in my opinion keep in mind this all my opinion set Michigan off the deep break. I don't think Michigan's been right since so, as I said, and keep in mind, Villanova ran through that tournament, people. Villanova, I don't think Villanova struggled that one time. And if I wasn't mistaken, they were the number one overall seed in that tournament. And it's very rare for a number one overall seed to win a national championship. I know that sounds crazy to you casuals, but it's number one really doesn't mean you think in these tournaments sometimes. Now, I understand if I missed like one of your teams, I won't apologize. <laughs> I won't do that now. Now, I will say, there were teams I thought about, and that was, Gonzaga was a main one, kind of just because I know everybody's like, they should be on it. Here's the thing, their con I, will, I never don't use this excuse, but their conference does hold them back a lot. I, I just kind of want to get that disclaimer out there. Gonzaga does, their conference does hold them back a lot. And on top of that, Baylor does not deserve to be on this list. I heard somebody tell me Baylor once, and I want to say Baylor does not deserve to be on this list. Do not hit me with that Baylor bull jive. But until then, I appreciate you guys listening. Everybody have a blessed one. Peace.